Hey everybody, this is episode 9. Let's make this. Come and join me. Welcome! We are going to decorate our cover and I'm really looking forward to this because it's been a long time. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to print the image or images onto fabric. I go to a secondhand store and I buy just white sheets. This is 100% cotton. This lasts me a long, long time. And you want some freezer paper. What you're going to do is you're going to pull out the freezer paper uh, roughly around the size of a regular sheet of paper. Freezer paper has a paper side and it has a really shiny side. You're going to iron the shiny side onto the back of your fabric. Then you're going to cut out that fabric piece the exact size of an 8.5 by 11 inch. I've already done this. The tricks to this is that when you iron it down, you use no steam and no water in your iron. It has to be a dry heat and you cut it, make sure that there's no fray because you don't want clogging up into your printer and that would be really disastrous. Wait till the ink dries. After the ink dries, then you can just take it off and there's your image. You have to know which end your paper is fed into your printer to be printed on. I'm going to put this into my printer and I'm going to print off my page. I find an image on Pinterest, I put it on my PowerPoint, I enlarge it, and until I'm happy with it, then I print it off. So it worked out really, really well. The image printed on top of my fabric. I use this method quite a lot in my own work. At the back of the cover, I'm also going to put the end. She's going to go in the center and then there's some butterflies here and I'm going to do something with her hair. I'm going to cut her out. I'm not going to fussy cut her yet. There is another step that I need to do for her. I'm just going to cut around her. She's cut out and cut out the butterfly wings and I'm not going to fussy cut those either because I'm going to do something different with those as well. And then my text. As you can see, she will fit on the cover this way and I have the wings here that will kind of go into her hair here. I'm also thinking about sewing on some beads and pearls to kind of hide that and to make it pretty. The end, that will go on the back here and I'll sew those down as well. This will go there. I'll cut these up so it's smaller and then Faith Chronicles will go there beside her. I also wanted to let you know after the ink has dried like mine, sometimes the color will be kind of faded and you really want it to stand out. One thing that I've tried that you really have to be aware of is that using regular markers to try to punch up the color on fabric, don't do it because uh, have alcohol in them. And through time, the alcohol will disintegrate your, your printer ink and it'll fade and it'll bleed and it'll look absolutely horrible. Try to remember not to use felt markers if you want to punch up the color. I really highly recommend that you use markers for fabric only. I have these. They're a little bit too simple than what I want. I do have these smaller markers, black. You have to make sure that they are for fabric only. kind of wanted to just punch up her eyes just a little bit before I do anything with her. This is a very, very fine tipped fabric marker. Just wanted to accentuate some of the black on here. I don't want to go too much because then if I do, it'll start looking really tacky. For her eyes there, where the white part is, I might put in a little tiny diamond jewel, something that really accentuates her eyes and brings those out. Even that is starting to look better. And if you can compare it to this eye to that eye, it looks a lot more clearer. And I'm going to do that for this eye as well. I don't want to do anything more to it. I'm okay with the wings being dull because I'm going to use sewing to accentuate these wings. Now for her, I need to put Wonder Under under her. Wonder under under is applique film. I actually order this in a bolt because I'm also an applique artist and I use a lot of this to applique with. You can get this in different weights, really light to a really heavy. This is medium weight. This is paper. 
and there's a web that is on the back. And when you heat it through an iron, this web actually melts. So it almost works like double-sided tape, except it's for fabric. You wanna draw on the um, paper side, not the web side. So for her, I'm going to trace her out. You don't generally use a pencil because a lead can really smear. This is a fine tip Sharpie, so I'll use that instead. What I want to do with this is trace around the cutout. It doesn't have to be perfect. What my idea is for this is I'm going to be ironing her down onto another fabric that will actually cover the cover of the book. Loosely cut it out. Where I have traced my line, I'm just going to cut just a little bit inside that line. I want to make sure that this completely covers her. This needs to be on the back of her before I can fussy cut her. Before I can iron her onto the back, I have to take off my freezer paper. Just like that. I turn her over. Remember, I want to iron the web on the back of her. When you're ironing this down, once again, it has to be a dry heat. You can't use any water or steam with this. I've done her. I've ironed the Wonder Under down on the back of her and also on the back of all of my text. And then after I fussy cut her, then I can tear off this paper and I can iron her down. She'll stick and stay. We will move on to our wings. Before we move on to our wings, I'm gonna use a fixative to set the ink on top of the fabric. I generally use in my own work, not with my quilting, but when I do art journaling with my fabric images, I use hairspray and it works like an, a fixative. And what that does is it, it protects and coats the ink so that the ink over time doesn't rub off or doesn't rub off as I'm trying to sew it. You just need a really light spray and then just let it dry for a bit. I'm probably about 12 inches away from my images and just with really light coats, Wait till this dries and then I will show you what I'm going to do with the wings. I didn't put the Wonder Under underneath these because I want to make them 3D-ish. I'm going to take off the freezer paper back. I just have a bunch of old blue fabric. I'm going to flip this over and make sure that I have enough of the fabric, this blue fabric, around. And then I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to use some pins here a little bit. Just gonna pin that down so it doesn't move. I'm gonna do the same with this one and I'm gonna use the edge of my wings and I'm gonna sew all around it. I'm not gonna leave any little gaps for me to fold it right side out, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. We're at the sewing machine. Before I sew around my wings, I took a pencil and just lightly marked around the wings. It's just visually easier for me to see where I'm supposed to sew. My thread, I have a white or a cream. I'm just using a regular straight stitch. As you can see, I have sewn around it. I'm gonna cut around the outside of my sewn edges. As I cut, I'm only cutting about one quarter inch. Where it's curved, I'm also going to clip, not past my sewing marks, but I'm gonna clip so that when I fold it out, that curve is gonna fold out really nice. I'm also going to cut a little bit shorter the top layer, because it just makes it better so that my edges, when I fold it right side out, aren't as bulky. There I have sewn and I have cut and I have trimmed. How I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to cut on the back side a small line, probably like an inch, inch and a half, taking care not to cut the top of my layer right in the middle like that. And that's about all I need. Now I'm going to fold it inside out. Very careful not to rip my scrap fabric that I just cut. When I'm working with these really tight corners, I like to use a chopstick. 
I don't like to use scissors because scissors can puncture. It makes it sort of 3D. So what I do is I go to the iron, I iron this flat, then I just do a whip stitch and just close it because on my cover, this is going to be laid flat. It won't matter if this is whip stitched because I'm, I'm not going to see the back anyway. I'm going to do that with the other one and then I will come back. I've already whip stitched the back of one of them and I thought I would just show you how to do a whip stitch. I threaded a needle and I took both ends and I thread it through my needle so that I have a loop at the end of my thread. I take this and just a little bit above the cut and I only grab the back of the fabric. I don't go through to the front. And then I take my needle and I go through the loop and that way I don't have to put a really big knot there. It lays flat. I'm going to take this part and I'm going to go through only the bottom to the other side and I lay it flat as I'm doing it and then I pull. But I don't yank on it because I don't want this to curl up. I want it to lay flat. I come up here again to this part and I go across underneath to the other edge and I pull. And it just makes a really nice stitch. Once again, only through the back. keep on going. At the end, that whole entire seam is stitched. As you can see, it's not perfect and it doesn't need to be. It just needs to cover. To end it off, I just kind of come up here like that. Just take a little bit of fabric. Before I put it through, I see my, I've made a little loop here. I go through it twice and I pull it like that. And then to kind of just make sure I go back up just a little bit through the stitches there. But remember, I'm not going through any of my top. And I cut, and there we go. I'll probably take this back to the iron and just flatten it out a little bit, but there are my wings. I'm gonna sew the cover in layers of fabric. The first thing that I have to do for my cover is that I need to do almost like a base, like my background um, cover. And that cover needs to go over the edge about an inch, maybe even an inch and a half, so that I can fold it over and glue it to the inside of the cover. This will be my base to work from, and then I will put other fabric on top of that, including my images, and sew those and work that up. For now, I just wanna cut it and then I'll go back to my iron and iron it all pretty. I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna go and iron this and then I'm going to get out my next fabric and I'm going to cut it to the size of the outside of my cover. I'm gonna get the second fabric that I wanna put on top of it. I'm actually going to measure the, the width and the height of the outside of my book. I probably want to have about a half an inch over because I'm gonna actually fold that in and sew it to this when I'm all finished. I've now put my book on top of my fabric and this is the top part. As you can see, I have about one quarter of an inch around and I'm gonna trace around my entire book. I'm going to cut, leaving like the others, about one quarter of an inch, maybe even an inch. I've drawn the lines around my book because that's my lines so I know when to fold it in. This doesn't need to be perfect because it's all gonna be folded in and sewn. Iron in these sides. I iron them in to the line that I had made. This is my background. This is gonna go on top. This will eventually be sewn to the white, to my background. This gives me liberty to do anything I want to this without using this. I place this down onto my cover with the edges folded in. I put it on top of my cover. I put pins where my spine is because I'm going to put another layer of fabric here. I'm gonna put that to a side. I wanna focus on my girl again. And as you can see, some of this paper has come off. That's okay. I I wanted to do a different kind of fabric for her shirt. And what I've chosen is this fabric. 
I'm gonna draw out onto my applique film the shape of her shirt and then I'm gonna use that and put that on top of her. I need to turn her over, draw around her shirt and where I would be fussy cutting her as well. Draw her smidge over the edges here, get my applique film on the paper side and draw that out. There we go. <laughs> cut around the applique film. I do not cut on the line, I'm cutting around the line. I'm gonna take this with this fabric and I'm going to iron it to the back of this fabric. Then I'm gonna cut on my line. So I've cut out her shirt. When I actually cut her out, I'm not gonna cut out this part. I'm gonna put it on top of her and iron it down and sew it. Now I'm going to fussy cut her out. I can probably take off the paper for this, but I'm gonna fussy cut her out. Cut off this blue border that's around her and I don't wanna see any white. So now she is all cut out. Before we get to the butterflies, I thought that I wanted to have something going on behind her. This is the back. What I wanted to do is have her to really punch out from the cover. I'm going to draw around her. When I cut this, I'm going to just leave a border around her in this black. I'm going to use my felt marker. Just want to go around her. Okay, her. I'm just tracing the lines that I traced around her like that, cut around those lines. What I'm looking for for this cover is that I want a, a subtle effect. I don't wanna go overboard. I like them to have drama. I'm going to take this now and iron this onto this. There you go, so as you can see, that really adds sort of a punch to her. See, and she really kind of comes out and that's what I wanted. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually cut her head right here and kind of stuff them in underneath her head so that it actually looks like it's protruding from her hair. Before I do that, I want to cut out the size of my spine. For now, put the wings over here. And for my spine, what I wanted to use was this. This is just a little coat for a five month old. I get a lot of my fabrics and different kinds of embellishments from secondhand stores. What really attracted me is that the inside of this is a silk, which is gorgeous, and the outside is minky. I wanted to use the minky for the center of my spine. I'm going to put it a little bit further outside of these pins because I wanted to do something that I would be actually covering those, like using that and that would cover the edges because I want all the edges covered. And if I just measure, that would be perfect. I'm gonna take this button off and using my fine little scissors because I really want to salvage as much of this fabric as possible. There we go. And then I can use that button for any other project that I have as well. First of all, I'm going to cut along here. When I get down to this edge, I want to fold it under as well. I'm just gonna lay this out flat and I can cut this back if I need to. I'll just cut it on the, on the salvage. This will be the center of my spine. So I've gone through my scraps and my lace and this is what I'm thinking of. Before I even do her, I'm gonna sew down these and also sew down the ends. So I'm actually gonna do my back first, get all of these sewn down. I will be putting something here at the side to finish off those edges. But for now, I just need to sew all of these down. Put her aside. How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use a basic straight stitch, sewing all of these things on top of the spine. And putting in my text I've removed the paper from the back and I inked all around my words so I'm gonna stitch those in and I will show you and then we'll move on to our main image as you can see I've sewn the ribbons and lace across my spine and I've only pinned the lace and ribbons on either side here but I haven't sewn them yet because I wanted to just place her where she needs to go first because I'm gonna put some of her underneath the lace before I sew that down. In order for me to do that, I need to iron this black piece down first before I even sew. I'm gonna go do that. She's gonna be done in stages. How to take off the back of your applique film. Just do that and just 
come straight off. So I'm going to just place this where I want it to go. And I want it to go at the, the bottom of my cover. That looks good. I wanted her to poke out here, but come in here, sort of gives it a 3D effect. Iron this down, and then I'll put the next layer on top. This is completely ironed on now. Second stage, I am gonna put her down. I kind of like the lace going over top of her, and then her shirt going over top of that. Before I can iron this shirt down, I need to do her wings on her head. In order to do that, I'm gonna take her off. I'm gonna get an X-Acto knife. I need to be kind of precise with this because there's no going back. I'm gonna put one right here where her hair's showing a little bit and I don't need it very wide. There we go. There, kind of like that. So it's not just poking out actually in her hair and a part of her. I wanna do the same thing to the other side and about the same width or it's gonna kind of look wonky. And now it looks like a part of her. I am gonna cut off this part here. Does it give some extra bulk that I don't want? I'm gonna go inside here and cut off my seam, so get rid of that bulk once again. There, that's much better. So it's, it can lay flat as best as possible. I'm gonna do the same thing to this. Try not to cut off too, too much. Now I can iron her down and iron her shirt down. I have my piece here to my sewing machine. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna sew down the sides of my spine first, and then I'm gonna move to her with black thread to do some free motion stitching. First of all, I wanna make sure that these are down and then I can focus on her. I'm using white thread or cream thread and I'm just doing a basic straight stitch. So I go down one side of the ribbon and turn around and come up the other side. Okay, and there is my ribbon that is sewn in. So I'm gonna do the other side and then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna put black thread in my sewing machine and I will show you how I free stitch this. All right, so I have all of this sewn down and now I'm going to free motion stitch. As you can see on here, a scrap piece of cloth, what basically happens is that you control or you move around the fabric underneath the needle. You can kind of draw with it. That's what I really like about it. If you're not comfortable doing this, I suggest that you get just a scrap piece of fabric. Drop your feed dogs. Make sure you have a free motion stitch foot on your machine or it, it won't work just with a flat foot. It needs a free motion and just practice. Go at your own pace. As you do this, you kind of get a feeling and a rhythm for it uh, of how fast that you should go. It's just on a straight stitch, but I control how fast or how wide I want my stitches to be. What I want to do for her is that I want to sew some details into her hair and sew down these wings. So I've sewn across here. And then I've come down and I'm kind of just gonna do some crazy things to her hair and have it kind of whisked down and over her face. As you can see, I kind of like did some stitches and so I added a little bit of hair and it adds to it. But I will come back when I put on the lace around her shirt and when I actually sew on my words. And I've sewn her up. So now I'm going to do her shirt and I'm gonna use this lace because this matches the flowers on her shirt. And I still am going to free motion this on. And first of all, I'm just gonna free motion her shoulder a little bit and then her other shoulder as well. And then I'll put the lace on. I'm just kind of just swiggling around doing my own sort of zigzag just to keep the edges down. Okay, and the other shoulder.
And I can bunch this up and move along as I sew it. There we go. Taking it out and cutting my thread. Okay, and there's her ruffle around her shirt. Now we're going to sew on the words. The words we're going to sew around, I placed them on top of her and then I ironed it on. The thread in my machine, I kind of wanted a light brown to go around these. I'm still going to free motion. Okay, so there we go. She is sewn down. She's not finished though, so what I'm gonna do is, what I wanna do is I wanna put beads or something here at the sides of the butterfly wings and accentuate more of these lines. I'm gonna kinda just finish her up and then I will come back and show you the end result before we sew this onto our white background. I finished her off. I think she turned out really well. Before I sew this to my white background here, I have to do my tie. This is uh, avocado dyed fabric and it's about two, two and a half inches wide and I folded it in half. And then I have this ribbon, which is about the same width of my fabric I just ripped. I folded that in half and put it on top of this. I'm just gonna sew along down both sides and I'll use that as my tie. I have sewn my ties to the white background. All I did was just place my cover on top of the white and then just made sure that these were level. Then I sewed just the ends. So I sewed about an inch in and sewed that really secure. If I would have sewn this all the way to the edge, then I wouldn't have had this part to fold into my cover and I want that. When I sew the top piece, that will also cover it, but then that will give me the space to wrap my background around my cover. I can place my top onto my background now. I'm going to make sure that that is equal on each side when I pin this down. When I sew around it, I'm gonna sew on the very, very edge here as close as the edge as I possibly can. I'm going to pin this down and then I will come back. We will sew it. So what I'm doing here is that as I'm pinning this, I'm making sure that this edge is also turned in on that fold that I ironed. I wanna make sure that I have this white part. I have a lot of it all around my top. Um, I pin back the wing here because I didn't want it sewn into my side. Now I'm gonna go to my machine and I'm gonna go very, very slowly, especially at the bottom here because this bottom is quite thick because I have layers and layers of fabric. I have this all sewn now. Just so you know, I've reinforced the spine here and I just sewed uh, down the middle of that on either side. Now, before I put this onto my cover, I wanted to embellish this a little bit more because you can never have too many embellishments. So I have this button from that coat where I got this from and I have some roses. I have one of this, which I love. I think I will include that. I have some old tarnished buttons. Um, I have some, they're, they're actually to cover buttons, but hey, I'm just gonna use them as is. Bunch of bling bling. Some keyhole, because there's holes on either side, so I can sew those in. I'm going to just sort of rearrange some of these things on here and sew them on, and then we will come back and attach this to the cover. Okay, so I've sewn all of my pieces onto the spine. To review, this was the button with a really shiny bead on top. This B here was given to me from Happy Mail, which was like awesome. These keys I've had forever and was waiting for a really special project to add them to, which yay, I found one. This is a keyhole. This I glued on with my E6000. And then I have my, my three brass buttons that I sewed. We're gonna glue this to this ugly cover and make it all beautiful and wonderful. I'm going to use my tacky glue and I also have some bull clips. I'm not actually going to put any glue on the top. I'm gonna to put glue around because this is gonna wrap around. So it, I guess it doesn't really matter which end is up because I won't, you won't see it. Flip this over. And how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna start on one edge and then do the other edge and then do the top and the bottom. It's, it's almost like stretching canvas. You never kind of just start somewhere and go around. You start somewhere and then you go somewhere else. And that gives you good tension. Oh, I glued up there and I said I was gonna glue here. See, I'm not even paying attention. I'll start from the top then. I keep that upside down in my cup to keep it flowing all the way to the bottom. 
taking note of where my sewn edges are and trying not to glue it past the sewn edges. I, I want to keep that down because when I put my paper backing on there, I want this to completely be flat and I don't want any bubbles or ripples or anything. And because I'm paranoid, I'm still going to put some bowl clips here. Now let's turn it around and we'll do the other side. And I'm moving that up as best as I can. There we go. So if you see that, that's not too bad. I see a little bit of it, but it's, for me, it's not a deal breaker, but it's at least it's covering the whole thing. Okay, let's do the sides. To do these corners, I'm going to use a technique that we use in quilting when we bind a quilt. I have it like this, and I'm going to turn the corner inside like that. That way it'll cover up my corner. Okay, on there and there, and then I'm gonna pull. I'm trying to keep that as flat as I can. Okay, this is already drying pretty fast, so I might not even wait till overnight. Okay, and that's not too, too bad. This is dry now to the touch. It doesn't feel wet at all. I think we did a pretty good job here. We're gonna cover these two pages here. Before I glued the cover to this, I measured out two pieces of paper that would go on top. I only had one sheet of this, so I thought, well, why do they need to match, right? This is my front and this is my back. I inked around the edges and I also put some double-sided tape, some score tape on the back. I've also made this, and this is gonna go on the inside of my cover. And I'm gonna show you that right now. This is my front, just making sure that it's going the right side up. Awesome. Now we're gonna move on to our hidden spine. Okay, I'm gonna get my tacky glue. Very generous amount on the back of my hidden spine here. Now, really making sure that this is going the right way. Making sure that you're doing that on the actual spine and not on the crease because that's what these flaps are for. Just press it down a bit. I wait till this is completely dry. Put this up here. I'm going to put elastics over it as it dries. I'm gonna wait till this dries and then come back and we'll do the two flaps and then we'll be done the construction. There's not really any trick to this for attaching the flaps of the hidden spine to the cover. What I do and works for me is that I take the strips off. I'm gonna put some tacky glue on it and then I just basically flip it over. And 
and then I just flip it over like I would uh, just a normal book. Okay, making sure this is tacked down really well. I'm probably going to put the elastics back on it and let this sit overnight again. And let's do the back here. Put it down like I normally would. I'm going to put these elastics back around it. This is dry and now we're going to see the final product. Using the tie, I'll probably cut these off. Our next episode is going to be episode number 10, our finale, and I'm going to do a flip through. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>